I put a lot of pressure on myself. I think something's not good enough, and I won't stop until I feel like I've made it. I'm never satisfied. I've always been an underdog. I feel like I beat the odds. I feel like this, whatever is in your path and in your heart, you need to do. Anything I do, I want to do it well. I'm here to spread a message of hope. Follow your heart. Don't follow what you've been told you're supposed to do. I always feel like it's two key ingredients when it comes to following your dreams, making something happen that the average person deems difficult. If you truly believe it, that's step one. Step two is, you know, the hard work that goes along with it. I do put a lot of God in my music, but not because I'm super religious. There are a lot of demons in my music, too. I acknowledge both. You can't reverse fame. You can lose all the money, but you'll never lose people knowing you. I'm a super-duper overanalyzer. You mix that with self-doubt and pressure, and that's never healthy. If I was to go to sleep before midnight, I would feel weird about myself, like I wasted a day. My most productive hours are between midnight and 5. As much as it might look like, to someone else, that I'm successful, I never feel like I'm anywhere. The further I go, I still feel equally further from my eventual goal. Because as I grow, I get more goals. I'm never content. I was a class clown. At 12, I was definitely clowning. I was making all the jokes, but I was smart, so the teachers didn't know what to do with me. College isn't in everyone's hearts. I am living proof, though, that school doesn't mess up your plans. It gives you more experiences to write about. My fans love me for me, my beats, my rhymes. I started playing violin in the fifth grade. They had a program in school where you could get out of class to go play instruments. So I raised my hand, left out of class, me and a bunch of my homeboys, just to get out of class for that day. They asked what instrument you wanted to play, and I picked the violin. I had a lot of resistance, and not just to fame. I was always conscious of not changing. When you're headlining, people are paying to come see you specifically. It's a different kind of pressure, because you've got to deliver. You've got to give these people what they paid for. It's a different mind state, a different type of mentality, but it's honestly a pretty good problem to have. You know? The thing about being an artist today is you get to develop right in front of people's eyes before you even put out an album. People think because I've got some success, I've made it. But in my eyes, it's like, how long has Jay Z been in the business? How many albums has he got? Not that I'm trying to be Jay Z but I am trying to be around for a long time. I struggled with being a broke college graduate, and while all my friends were getting career jobs, I was working horrible part-time jobs. That's why now, even when I get tired, I think, this is what I asked for. One day, I'll be listening to a bunch of Ray Charles, the next day, it's nothing but red hot chili peppers. The next day, it might be Tupac all day. I kinda like the idea of having an album that's all me. I feel like I'm a New Yorker because I really know the city. 
I actually tell the drivers where to go. I have this bad habit. I always question the drivers. I do that all the time because I feel like I know the best way, when really it's like, yo, man, shut up. This dude does this every day of his life. I was just a goofy little funny kid who was always getting sent to the principal. It wasn't serious because I was smart. I wasn't like a true troublemaker, just rambunctious, like talkative and trying to be funny. That was me in middle school. I have a little bit of that gamer spirit in me. I just don't have the time to be a gamer, but in another life, I would be one. My parents were divorced by the time I was even conscious, like, I don't remember them ever being together. My real dream is to have a hole, like, buy a whole piece of land. Imagine, like, a long driveway, like, a cul-de-sac type street, with maybe, like, seven houses. Me be right here, have my mom be able to be right here, my brother over here, my girl's grandmother and family right here, friends over there, that's my real dream. I still want to rap better than everybody else, and I want to say important things. Producing all my own songs and refusing to go to the hop producer, that's the biggest risk I've taken so far. I'm the same kid who used to hop the trains with headphones and just go to downtown Manhattan, walk around and listen to music or walk through the city. The fame restricts that. It's a small complaint in comparison to the benefits I get from it. But the restrictive part is what I don't like and the fact that it's not reversible. I actually started off majoring in computer science, but I knew right away I wasn't going to stay with it. It was because I had this one professor who was the loneliest, saddest man I've ever known. He was a programmer, and I knew that I didn't want to do whatever he did. So after that, I switched to communications. Usually I start with a beat. I start making a beat, and my producer side is making the beat. And on a good day, my rapper side will jump in and start the writing process, maybe come up with a hook or start a verse. Sometimes it just happens like that. A song like Lights Please happens like that. I want people to follow their dreams, yes, but I'm not interested in telling young black kids how to be rappers. I want to show them that there's so many other paths you can take besides a rapper or basketball player. I was a super duper Tupac fan, and I realized later, when I became a huge Nas fan and a huge Eminem fan, I was drawn to the storytellers. They all told stories in different ways, but they were all like the best storytellers. I was a huge Mike Tyson fan growing up. His fights were always on in my house. I pay attention to lyrics and I know what rap fans care about. I try to write for the average listener, and I'm conscious of the mainstream without selling out. I met Will Smith twice. I didn't talk to him for too long, but I was trying to let him know that my age group grew up watching him. He was the coolest guy on television and the coolest guy in movies. Rhyme patterns are nothing without meanings to the words. A lot of rappers can do those flows, but the raps aren't really about anything, which is cool sometimes. But to have the flow and the message is one of my favorite things. I'm not going to be bad at anything, and I want to actually be the best at anything I'm doing. So if I'm playing basketball, if I'm taking the SATs, like, there's a competitive spirit behind it with production, 
it's the same thing. Barack Obama would not be president if he were dark skin. You know what I mean? That's just the truth. I might not be as successful as I am now if I was dark skin. I'm half black, half white. So I basically put it like this. I can fit in anywhere. That's why I write so many stories from so many different perspectives, because I've seen so many. When I was in college, my girl got me a job at the doctor's office she was working at. I was a file clerk. No disrespect, but I don't think a man can do that job. It takes so much meticulous and precise file keeping. I now possess the tools as a producer and a songwriter to really just go out and make smashes all day long. I could make an album full of smash records that got pop appeal, but my heart is in hip hop. My heart is in telling stories. And it's like therapy for me. Touring is very routine. You get to the city, you go to the hotel, you got to be at the hotel by a certain time, it's very routine. I'm not a very structured person, so when I get some structure, it's cool. It's good for me. I had a rat tail when I was younger. I had this nice Bobby Brown fade with a rat tail that was long enough to wrap around my face. I used to chew on the end and bite it. There's been people who've rapped and produced like Kanye, but I don't feel like on the rapping side there's ever been a producer who can rap as good as I think I can rap. In hip-hop, there's not a lot of love. There's not a lot of love being spread. It's always like I'm stunting on you raps, or I'm better than you raps. It's not a lot of yo man, I idolize you raps. I want to be like Bruce Springsteen or something, making songs that are relevant. I actually started off majoring in computer science, but I knew right away I wasn't going to stay with it. It was because I had this one professor who was the loneliest, saddest man I've ever known. He was a programmer, and I knew that I didn't want to do whatever he did. No rapper in the world from Jay-Z to Tupac to Biggie has 100% love on everything they do. I don't live for the accolades. I'm more so about the music, making it, and putting it out. Those are the two best feelings. I think if I did something in the pop world right now, it would be for Rihanna. I'd love to do something production-wise for her. I just feel like, with rappers, there's so much complacency. It's like, oh, I'm a rapper. I'm successful. I make money. That's all that matters. But there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. Whether or not you're aware of it, it's happening. I worked in ad sales. I would call up local businesses and try to get them to buy ads in the paper. The whole time, I felt like I was just scamming people. Sometimes I try my tie. It's so fruity. It's a little embarrassing, but I like it. There was the time I bought three cars in the span of three or four weeks. It was crazy, it wasn't greedy. It was mine, my girls, my moms. I got Benzes for my ladies, but I felt crazy. You have to understand I come from a world where we're very modest, but that's not greedy. That's nice, right? I've got two Rolexes that I'm very proud of, a gold presidential that was a gift and a white gold one I gifted myself. I'm trying to step my game up and get a few more of those. 
I feel like the reason people feel like they know me is because I'm giving you myself in the music. There's where the connection comes from. You can't Twitter that.